Hey guys, what's up? It's Jonathan LOL and welcome to the Druids Talents video. Today I'm going to be talking about the different talents that Druids got and some of the changes that the that were made to their class, specifically Resto, because that's what I play. And I'll inform you on what I feel are the best talents and why they are the best talents and why the ones that are why the other ones that are around are not the best talents in my opinion. And also, I'm just going to talk about all the different changes to the game and predictions for Miss of Pandaria and how good Resto Druids will be. Alright, so let's get started with the first tier. In the first tier, we have Feline Swiftness, Displacer Beast, and Wild Charge. Now, I specifically chose Displacer Beast because I feel that it's the best talent in this, uh, in this tier. Now, I'm going to explain myself. So, first, let me start off by telling you what the other ones do and what Displacer does. Feline Swiftness is more for Feral Druids because it increases your movement speed by 15%. This was built into the spec pre-patch, but now it is uh, now it's like a passive thing that you have to spec into, and you have to give up Wild Charge and Displacer Beast. Displacer Beast is like a blink on a 30 second cooldown for Druids, and it's amazing. <laughs> There's no other words for it other than that. It basically puts you in stealth, so basically if you don't have any dots on you or anything, you can hit this. You can teleport to someone and you can pounce them and then cyclone them off of it. It's really amazing. And then you got Wild Charge. The reason I didn't choose Wild Charge is because it has a positional requirement. You can't really just do it on any at any old place. Uh, it's good in some situations, but basically it just teleports you to an ally. And it's just, uh, I, I don't know, I don't like it. And. Uh, Eh, I just feel Displacer Beast is a lot stronger, even though it is half the cooldown of Displacer Beast. Now, let's go on to the next tier, Nature Swiftness, Renewal, and Scenarian Ward. I chose Nature Swiftness, because Nature Swiftness is an absolute necessity right now, I believe. Because you can NS pretty much anything, and it also gives you a 50% increased effect on whatever you do. So if you're... Uh, if you're going to cyclone someone and you do it, then you get about a 9 second cyclone, which is awesome, except it doesn't work in PvP. I don't understand, it's so saddening, but anyway. Uh, I feel like if you use your NS for a cyclone, then you should be able to get a longer cyclone, because that's a really, really big throw away. Uh, it's a really big risk to do that, and you should be rewarded, but Blizzard doesn't believe in compensating people for risk, I guess. Uh, anyway. It's a necessity. Uh, renewal actually gives you a 30% self heal, and it's usable in all forms, but it's just not as strong as NS because Resto Druids have a lot of utility right now, so you don't really, you don't have to have this. You don't, uh, we're not at a state right now where you absolutely have to have this 30% self heal. Then we got Scenarian Ward. This is basically another hot on a 30 second cooldown. It does a lot of healing, I really like it, except I, I'm not willing to give up Nature Swiftness for it. So that'll do it for that tier. Let's go on to the next tier, which is the third one. We've got Fairy Swarm, Mass Entanglement, and Typhoon. For me, guys, this was a really easy tier. Typhoon is just too strong, especially on Z-axis maps like Dalaran and Blade's Edge. Uh, it's too good to not get. Uh, it just does what the old Typhoon does, it knocks people off. Mass Entanglement roots your target in place for 20 seconds, which is a PvE number, obviously. It's a two minute cooldown, uh, it does it affects five targets, so it's very good. Uh, I didn't choose this one because, I mean, I, I'll probably play around with this one a bit simply because Typhoon won't be as beneficial on non-Z-axis maps, but I really love to use Typhoon as an interrupt as well. Uh, that's the really amazing thing about Typhoon is that not only does it knock people away, it also, you know, can interrupt their cast, obviously, since, you know, it's a knockback. But Mass Entanglement is certainly very, very viable against melee teams. I just haven't tried it out yet. haven't really played a lot, but I chose Typhoon because it's too good to not get. And Fairy Swarm is a 50% slow for 15 seconds. It replaces Fairy Fire. Makes it... I mean, this is really, really beneficial, especially for uh, maybe... Uh, I can't really find a scenario where Resto uh, benefits from this very much, but I know that Moonkin and Feral will both benefit from this greatly. But, I mean, it's certainly usable, but Mass Entanglement and Typhoon are definitely going to trump this for resto uses. 
That'll do it for that tier. Let's go into the next one. Soul of the Forest, Incarnation, and Force of Nature. I chose Incarnation because this is your tree form talent. This gives you the tree of life form, and it's it's amazing. Uh, Soul of the Forest, it gives you 50% haste every time you use Swiftman. I really like it. Uh, I, I, I can't pick that over tree form, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe in the future I'll play around with it a bit, but uh, for right now I'm really leaning towards tree form. And Force of Nature is basically your trance, your tree ants, however you want to say it. It's on a one minute cooldown, and it does whatever you specialize in. So if you are feral, then it'll uh, do a lot of damage, a lot of melee damage. If you're Munkin, then it'll do a lot of caster damage. And if you're Resto, then it'll heal for you, which is really awesome. So that'll do it for that tier. That was a pretty easy pick for me at this point. Maybe later on I'll try out the other ones, but for now I'm going with tree form. And the final tier that we can get right now, Disorienting Roar, or Ursul's Vortex, and Mighty Bash. This one is a, is pretty tearing for me. I, I, I'm having a, I have a hard time picking here, but I think I can persuade you guys to pick the one that I picked as well. So, Mighty Bash is basically your Bear Bash. It's a 5 second stun on a 50 second cooldown. You can do it in any form. It's a very useful ability. It gives you a free cyclone basically if there are no interrupts up. The target can't LOS you. Uh, Ursul's Vortex is bugged right now in PvP unfortunately. Uh, I, I was having a lot of fun using this guys in like in PvE environments and stuff like that. It was just really cool concept. I like playing around with it. It's a one minute cooldown. Oh, by the way, the bash is a 50 second cooldown as well. So it's about, it's, you know, basically one minute. And Ursul's Vortex is one minute. Uh, and if you guys don't know what this does, it actually sucks your targets in towards a, towards a point that you click on the ground. And if they move, if they, if they're, they're slowed inside of it, and if they leave it, then they get sucked back in. So it's a very useful thing, and you can do a lot of playing around with it with Typhoon. Unfortunately, it's just bugged right now in PvP. Uh, I haven't been able to get it to work. I don't know why. <laughs> and the other one is Disorienting Roar. It's a 30 second cooldown. It basically disorients all enemies within 10 yards for 3 seconds. But, the, the thing about this is that it breaks on damage. It's very, very, very easy to break it. So if there's like if you're playing with a warlock and there's a warlock dot up, it's gonna break. It's it's just frustrating, and mighty bash doesn't break anything. So if you're playing say shadow play or something, and you want to stun a target, then your shadow your shadow priest and your warlock can free cast on that target as long as they don't get interrupted, of course. And it'll be sitting there and it won't break for five seconds. That that's huge, guys. Absolutely huge and game breaking. So that'll do it for all the talents. I hope you guys uh, agree with the ones that I chose. Uh, there are certainly changes that you can make to this, depending on your situation, which is you know an obvious factor in every single scenario. So let me know in the comments below what you think about what could be changed about this and what talents you've had a lot of fun with. And uh, I'll see if I can try them out, and I'll continue to make videos about this. Now I'm going to move into the section of the video where I talk about what I like and what I don't like about the patch so far and all the different changes that have been made and my predictions for the future of the game. Druids have so many changes during this patch and this coming expansion has so much in store for them that's so much different from what it is right now. And I just want to talk about a few of those things. So in addition to the all of the different talent changes and stuff, there are a lot of different things in the game that are really game changing. Drew's actually got a lot of like healing power, a lot of burst healing power that allows them to actually do actual healing, and this is a change that should have happened over a year ago, guys. Druids have been in the slumps forever, and I had to quit my Druid and start playing my Shaman simply because Blizzard wouldn't fix it, and I never understood why, but I'm thankful that they're probably going to be the best healer next expansion. And if you're a Druid player, if you're a diehard Druid like me, like, I, I just, I miss my Druid so much, I miss playing it, because that's what I'm best at. Uh, I just started playing Shaman in Season 9, just over probably a year and a half, year and a half ago. I've been playing my Druid for almost 3 or 4 years. 
So I have like a an attachment to the class because I feel like I'm better at it than any other class. And I feel like, you know, that uh, I'm a better player whenever it comes to the type of play style that rest of your have. So, uh, the first change that really and really got me going about wrestling druids was obviously the healing power. Now there are also a lot of different game changers in that I want to talk about. This spell's got bumped up to 8 second cooldowns. So you know how whenever you're spamming life blooms and you don't want to hit that dispel button because you know if you don't hit the life blooms harder then you know your teammates are going to die but they also need dispels. Well now you don't have to do that because you can only dispel once every eight seconds and the dispel cleans everything off so it's quite amazing uh, the next change is the tree form change you know how whenever you're in tree form and you need to maybe go bear form and pop your uh, pop your wall well now you can pop your wall you can displace your beast whatever as long as that buff is up from incarnation then you'll be able to go back into tree form whenever you please and that's an amazing change thank you blizzard very much now druid's got a lot of survivability and utility and by that i mean wrestler druid's getting typhoon wrestler druid's getting the mass entangle wrestler druid's getting the displacer beast displacer beast is probably the best spell guys there were war games the other night where i was playing and i displacer beast uh, smoke bombs and rogues only have one smoke bomb now. Thank God. It's a long time awaited for that <laughs> uh, But anyway, I displaced her beast at least three or four smoke bombs, which is really insane So if you displace your beast one smoke bomb, no need to worry There's no other smoke bombs uh, For about for three to five minutes. I can't remember the exact cooldown but anyway there's also a really cool glyph that makes your life a lot easier. You know how Cyclone was only a 25 sec or a 25 yard range? Well, guess what? Now it is 29 yards with the glyph, which is a huge change, which makes a big difference, believe it or not. Uh, I'm fighting with myself currently about which glyphs I should use, so that's why I didn't put the glyphs in here. I need some more time to test. I have, this is uh. It, this is about a week and a half after the patch, and this is the first time that I've gotten to play. And it, it seems like the entire time, because I was gone. But anyway, uh, that's, that's gonna pretty much wrap it up. Those are the things that mainly impacted me and said to me, Hey man, Resto Druids are gonna be worth playing again. I'll be so upset though, if Blizzard messes up this class and nerfs it into the ground and makes it the worst healer again. I just, I won't be able to handle that, <laughs> because it's happened like three times now. It happened in Season 5, but they fixed it in Wrath, and then it happened again in Season 9 at the end of it, and it's been that way the entire expansion, and I'm just tired of it. So, unfortunately, uh, Blizzard kind of is slow on things, and they don't update for PvP properly, because they thought that we were too good for PvE. Ah, whatever. I don't play PvE. Maybe you do, but I don't really care about it. And, yeah, I hope they don't mess it up this time. So, guys, get excited about Resto Druids because my prediction is that they're going to be the best healers. Now, you may have heard this from a lot of people. And, uh, you know, you may have, you know, imagined that, well, they can't be the best healers if Paladins are going to be so strong. But I think that Resto Druids are going to be better. Uh, I think Paladins are going to have better heals. But I think that Resto Druids will be the better class. So... That's going to be it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave any thoughts or comments below. And let me know what talents I should try out, what glyphs you're having fun with and whatnot. And just let me know if you're excited for Mop, because I am certainly very excited for Mop. Anyway, until next time, guys. See you later.